Go to the paddock. Here's Sam. Well, thank you very much, Roger Houston. You know, you talk about interface problems. My people should have meet with your people and do lunch, and we'll be able to uh, get everything corrected here. We're talking to Steve Brannon, who's the trainer of number two Rose Run Blaze in this race. You're three to one on the morning line. You're one to five on the tote board right now. But things have not been a bed of roses for Rose Run Blaze. No, she's had a lot of trouble this summer. She's been sore, been fighting soreness all summer long. This is her last start, win, lose, or draw, and just hope for the best. Now, she was making breaks early on and uh, uh, last two lines though she's been flat at Wasion and Montpelier and you think you've got her figured out right now? I ain't gonna guarantee anything this year. <laughs> I hope. I mean she's been pretty decent. She's a little sore today and she's been. I mean last week we raced on a really bad track and it really hurt her behind and just had enough time to get her really sounded back up. Um, I hope she's okay just for David's fact but we'll see. Well, you've got Dave Miller driving, uh, dominant driver out at the Meadowlands this year. Just a, a sensational career move for him to go from Ohio to the East Coast. He's driving in all the big races. Give him any instructions here today for this one? No, I didn't, give him, I didn't tell him a thing. I just told him how she was and tried to keep her a little bit calm and... You don't have to tell him nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's forgot more than most of us know, that's for sure. Steve, the horse racing business is up and down, and you have had some sensational years. You've had some top trotters and pacers, but you said before we came on air, this year has not been one of them. This year's been a terrible year. I had a really good Philly race yesterday. David drove her. He drove her all last year. She went like 8 out of 9, made 120,000. She's been terrible since the day I hitched her back up this year, and we've never found it. Um, I guess she's going to be a broodmare unless she'd get good really fast. And then I shipped us out of this spring and they all got sick. And I mean, they got sick. I never had 13 horses have the virus that bad. And the rest of the summer has been a disaster. We've just been trying to fight to get back and trying to take our time without killing them off for next year. And it's been a tough summer, but that's the business. And if you love what you're doing, that's all that matters. A lot of peaks and a lot of valleys. Are you active at the uh, yearling sale down at Sayota? I hear they're selling pretty high down there. Yeah, they were very high last night. I didn't buy a horse. I bid on two horses the whole night long and that was it. Um, yeah, we're going to try to buy a couple. We got like three we raised, and we got three more to break. We're okay as far as horses. I'm, I'm going to go to Lexington and try to buy a couple. So, Now, one of my favorite horses was Scotch Baker, and you talk about a little engine that could. This horse wasn't hardly 15 hands, was he? No, nah, he's about 14 four. So he was very little, but man, did he have a gait. And he was, he wasn't, I can't say he was my favorite horse of all time. I had as much fun with him. I'm scoring too late last year. was probably close to my favorite horse. I mean, this year's killed me on her because I absolutely love the horse and just everything about her. But Scotch was, he went 55 out here that day. I don't know where he could have paced if I had turned him loose. He was just a sensational animal. And he's, they always say size is, you know, you got to have size, be good horses. And if that's the case, I'd say a rabbit would outrun an elephant. <laughs> I would agree with you there because Scotch Baker was a world champion pacing gelding, I believe, as a two-year-old, maybe even as a three-year-old. Three and old. somebody told me he's still racing. No, they quit with him. He's down in um, South Carolina, it turned out. He's... He ran out of, well, he got where he just couldn't go enough no more, and the people that had him both died here a year ago. One of them got killed in a car wreck, and the other one had a tumor on his brain that killed them both, and his daughter was smart enough, she just retired him. But he was a nice horse. I mean, I wish I could find another one like him. Well, I'm looking forward to retiring in South Carolina myself someday with all those golf courses at Myrtle Beach. Steve Brandon, we're one minute away from post time. Best of luck to you and continued success. Thank you very much. Let's send it back to the infield. Here's the voice.